morning. Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Michael's. Um, as always, I'm not very organised and hadn't uh, pre-printed uh, notices, so I'll do them from this side where I can see them. So, next one. So, on Monday night at the session, we decided uh, on our Lent appeal for 2024, it will be uh, Medsan Sans Frontier, in particular for their work in Palestine. So start collecting your loose change or putting aside the money that you would have spent on the sacrifices you're making during Lent and bring it with you on Easter Sunday. On Tuesday, and for the next six Tuesdays, Andrea is leading uh, Lent study groups uh, it's using Christian aid material. The first one is Act on Poverty Prophetic. Uh, they are all standalone, so you don't need to sign up to them all, but uh, do come along to all or any as you wish. On Wednesday afternoon at 2 o'clock, the Guild meet, uh, and the Mr. L Eric Melvin will give a talk on Japan. On Friday night at uh, St. Martin's on Dalry Road, there's a quiz night. Now last year, uh, I think we were, we were two teams. I don't think we have a, a title to defend, but I, I think we were close contenders the last time. So if you are free on Friday, do come along and join us. Um, I think you bring your own drink and nibbles, and uh, certainly was a fun evening last year, so please do join us. Alec Anderson is again collecting chocolate eggs for Easter, so if you want to bring some, uh, give them and he'll put them uh, somewhere safe for distribution on Easter Sunday. The World Day of Prayer Service on the 1st of March uh, for this area, the service is in St Mary's Episcopal Cathedral at 11.30. The service has been prepared by women of Palestine, but was done so uh, probably about two years ago, um, but so it will have changed somewhat in its meaning. And on Saturday the 2nd of March, just advance morning, uh, our monthly coffee morning, 10.30 till 12. And please do join us for tea and coffee in the hall after the service. This morning, Andrea is preaching at, as interim moderator at St Andrew's Clermont. And it's their annual stated meeting, and we are delighted to welcome William Watt, who is currently Assistant Minister at Restore for Noel, and I think has been doing quite a bit of local work for Andrea at St Andrews. So it's a pleasure to have you here and lead our worship this morning. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. It's, it's great to be here on completely new territory for me, but there are one or two faces that I know from the past, and it's great to, to reconnect with Stuart. Stuart and I go back over 30 years, and it's a long, long time since we've met, so there was a lot to catch up with, and still is a lot to catch up with, I'm sure. So it's great to be here, and um, I've been helping out at Clermiston, and this is the state general meeting, so Andrew and I have swapped. So, our call to us. Surely the Lord is in this place. This is none other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. So let us worship God as we sing an opening hymn and 337, 40 days and 40 nights.
Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. On our slide this morning is a picture of different images of Christ, different images that show how many different ways that he's been depicted by different cultures and different periods of history. And I've got one here that a friend of mine got painted for my ordination by an, an icon painter who paints them in traditional style with egg wars and gold. And this one 
which is quite mysterious. But yet, I like this one because it stood out to me as being highlighting the mystery of Christ, the Christ that's mentioned in John and the Logos, where it speaks about John, Christ as the Logos, where from the beginning of time, the Creator with God from the very beginning, by the Spirit brooded over the water and caused anything to exist. And this speaks to me of that image of Christ and drew me to it, and I was pleased to get it. But then somebody else gave me another one, and I think this one is even better than that one. Um, because I think it may even be true to form. And I'd like, you to sh I'd like to show you this one. See what you think of it. This might be a better image than Christ. When we see ourselves looking back at us. And we use mirrors all the time. We use them so often that we see our face in them so often that I think we barely think about it. But mirrors can be helpful at bad corners to show traffic coming in. They can help us to see where we're going. The middle in the front of your car helps you to see where you've been. But mostly we look in the mirror to see how we look. Every one of us probably did that this morning. We want to check that we're looking neat and tidy before we go out to meet other people. And we we'll worry about our image. But I wonder if God worries about our image. Because God says, we are God's children. We are made in his image. And we are loved by God. So the next time we look in the mirror, try and think about it as God sees us. Made in his image. And loved by him. Even walks and all, every bit about the face that we're not so keen on. God loves it. And during Lent, use that time, looking in the mirror, to be close and to understand ourselves, to come to terms with the bits that we like and the bits that we would rather not see, so that we can overread self-reflect and become more Christ-like, become Christ's hands, his feet, to bring light to others in their desert places. So we sing of that, we come in Christ's hands and feet, as we sing in 351, Jesus' hands and Hands were kind hands doing good to all, healing pain and sickness, blessing children small, washing tired feet and saving those who fall. Jesus' hands were kind hands doing good to all. Take my hands, Lord Jesus, let them work for you. Make them strong and gentle, kind in all I do. Let me watch you, Jesus, till I'm gentle too. Till my hands are kind hands, work to good to you.
New Testament reading is taken from 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Come, listen to the word of God. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that they do not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be, He has not been revealed. What we do know is this, when He is revealed, we will be like Him. For we will, we will see Him as He is. And all who have seen this hope in Him, purify themselves just as He is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that He was revealed to take away sin, and in Him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteousness, just as he is righteousness. Everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born of God do not sin, because God's seed abides in them. They cannot sin, because they have been born of God. The children of God and the children of the devil are revealed in this way. All who do not know what is right are not from God, nor are those who do not love their brother and sister.
The New Testament reading is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 2. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole of Judea, countryside, and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, This is the time, this time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Amen. Thanks be to God. And we worship God again as we sing our next hymn. The words are on the screen. Teach me, my Lord and King, and all things be to see. Teach me, my God and King, 
and all things in me to see. And what I do in anything, to do it as for me. A man that looks on glass, on it may stay his eye. But if he blazes through it glass, and then the heaven is fine. Due to the old language of this hymn, it was a long, long time before I actually realised that Ted Herbert is here referring to a mirror. A man that looks on glass, a looking glass, a mirror. I remember my grandfather back in Portsea would never actually use the term mirror. The term mirror was never in his vocabulary. He always spoke of the glass or the looking glass. And the term looking glass seems to me to be much more profound than just a mirror. We look in the mirror each day and we see ourselves looking back at us. And do we like what we see? We see ourselves so often that we don't notice the passing of the years, that the face looking back at us now is very different from the face that looked back at us 40 or more years ago. We've changed with time. We've changed not only in our looks, but we've changed inwardly as well. And I think this is at the heart of what Herbert is saying. We can look in the mirror and see only our outward image. Or we can look more closely, more deeply into it, passing through the outward image and see more profoundly that face looking back and see what that face is actually saying to us. If we take time to look more deeply, looking at the features, the eyes that have seen every moment of our lives, that have made us who we are, that know our deepest thoughts, we will see ourselves more fully. We'll see ourselves for who we truly are. Bits of what we'll see will like it all. Other bits, not so much. And other bits, we would rather not remember at all. But as Herbert says, if he pleaseth through it pass, and then the heaven is far. Don't know about you, but I've always felt there's something slightly mysterious about mirrors. Something slightly sinister almost. There's a famous painting of a lady standing with her back to you, and you can only see her face through the reflection in the mirror. And I've always found there to be something slightly odd, slightly eerie about that. As though if you turn around, your real face would be completely different to the one in the mirror. There used to be a Highland tradition connected with mirrors where people claimed to have the second sight and would sit for just a candle staring into the mirror in an attempt to tell the future. They called it scrying. So mirrors have been used for lots of unusual association, associated purposes. But they're also slightly odd. But if you look in a mirror, you're seeing a kind of alternate reality. To start with, everything is reversed. And the face that we see looking back at us is actually different to the face that others actually see. And we could only ever see ourselves in the mirror. So that begs the question, do we ever actually see ourselves as we truly are? As Burns said, oh, let some power the gift to give. 
we see ourselves as ever see us. It went from many a blunder, free us, and foolish no sin. So for what image do we portray? And are we half way of the way? And I'll read in this morning, we are given a glimpse of what we truly are. We are given a glimpse of the chance to pass through the mirror, to see ourselves how God sees us, as made in his image, as children of God, as well loved. No sinner that later on behold the amazing gift the Father has bestowed on us, so that we may be called sons of God. That's the image that we bring back at us. John says, We are beloved gods, we are the gods to do our children now. This is the possibility of resurrection now, of a new way of seeing ourselves, of new possibilities, but also new responsibilities to ensure that our reflection reflects the light that we are, not only to ourselves, but to those around us. Lent is the time when we prepare ourselves to be ready to make change. It's not simply a period between leftover pancakes and the promise of chocolate eggs. The realisation of this waiting time gives us hope. Hope for the present and hope for the future. God's love is universal and he wants to show us we are all his children, each and every one of us. For he loves the whole of creation, even when creation misses the mark. The poet John Baylor puts it like this. Two worlds are ours, whose only sin prevents us to describe the mystic heaven and earth within, plain as the sea and sky. Thou who hast given me eyes to see, and love this sight so fair, give me a heart to find out thee, and greet thee everywhere. God loves his creation. God is part of his creation. And he wants the best for the world. And we have a special place in it, and a special responsibility to it. We are God's children. His image on earth. Often do we fall short of that mark. We have the commandment to continually reflect the image of Christ to the world. That is what it means to be the children of God. When we are like him, as John says, the children of God and the children of the devil are revealed in this way. All who do what is right, or who do not love their brother and sisters, are not children of God. It's about passing through the glass and seeing the world differently. William Barclay tells the story of a man who every day went into a cathedral and he would kneel down in front of a large old crucifix in a prayerful position, and he could be there the whole afternoon. And it was noticed that he never seemed to say a word. He just sat there for the whole time, looking up at the figure of Christ on the cross. And eventually someone asked him why he did this. And he replied quite simply, I look at him and he looks at me. I look at him and he looks at me. So simple and yet so profound. For the person who looks long enough at Jesus must become more like him. 
For Christ was tempted. Christ suffered for the love of the world, just as we too are tempted. Tempted to miss the mark that God would have for us. And we too suffer on our life's journey. But the wilderness time of life asks us to get close to the trials and sufferings and to understand our lives and the world better. And to understand that the greatest world of black and white is the building block of creation. And the wilderness time allows us to sit in that place. Its shortfalls and our shortfalls, growing close to them, accepting them, but understanding that they are ultimately held in God's love, coming to terms so that we can be more free, more open, more like Christ, and reflect His image to God. The image in the mirror that we are looking back at this is the image of a child of God, warts and all. And moreover, when we see others, we see the image of another child of God, warts and all, looking back at us. This is what it means to pass through the glass, to see the world and each other for what we truly are, spiritual beings made in God's image and loved by Him. To pass through the glass means not just talking of love and each other, it means action now. Fine words will never take the place of fine deeds. We are here to show God's love to the world in action. Self-sacrifice is the principle of the cross. And we are commanded to do so. By this, people will recognize that God's love is abiding in us. And we love our neighbor as ourselves. Surely this is good news. Good news of resurrection that is possible now, of a new and better way of living, a better way of seeing and understanding each other. So, this first Sunday of Lent, a time of self reflection, when, like Christ, we go into our wilderness for a period. To look at ourselves and our lives without distraction. But the wilderness has much to teach us, much to reflect on. It's a time to take a close hard look at ourselves and the image we see in the mirror. A time to face up to the bits we like and the bits we don't, and to come to terms with the world and ourselves. It's a time of struggling with things that too often get conveniently put on the back burner, but yet still niggle away. A time to struggle with our image until our reflection is known to Christ. So this Lent, look in the mirror Love and accept that face looking back, just as the Creator loves and accepts it. Learn the lessons from the mistakes of the years that have printed the lines around the eyes, round the creases in the skin. And afterwards, be ready for the resurrection that waits around the corner. But for now, we wait. We wait in our lives of time. A time of preparation for what's to come. Amen.
Lord from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above your heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy For the fulfillment of your kingdom. Amen. And we send from 470 to all the amazing gift of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Give us when we make this life about our kingdom instead of yours. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we pray for wisdom this morning. Wisdom to see you and all of creation. 
We see you in the face of others as a loved child of God. So we are led to modern this time, teach us more about ourselves and how you would have us be. Prepare us to change, to be more like you, to love freely without looking for anything in the past. Open our eyes to see you in the unexpected places of life, in those who we find it hard to love, in those who we wouldn't naturally be company with. Help us to see you in those who pull us out of our comfort zones and ask the questions that we would rather avoid. Help us to look through the image we see in the mirror to a deeper reality where we can see you at work in us in all things in heaven and in earth. You are the creator of all things. You work through the most unlikely of saints. Your love underpins creation and holds all things in being. So may we look beyond ourselves and find you everywhere. Use our eyes, our ears, use our hands and feet to reflect you in a world that is in such desperate need of you. Reflecting love and hope until the whole earth is filled with the glory of God and the kingdom of earth mirrors more closely your kingdom of heaven, your kingdom of love, this day and every day. So we go into a lending time, open to growth and open to change. Take us by your hand and lead us. And we sing our fellow hymn, in 519, Love Divine, or Love's Excel. <laughs>
the inevitability and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us this day, now and forevermore. Mm -hmm.